So I'm here in Pismo Beach with my bird. And it, wow, look at him. He is. What's up, Zan fam? It's Zanardi. Welcome back to another video. I'm so excited you guys are here. I just want to start off by saying this is not a conspiracy channel. I'm not really a conspiracy person. I mean, I do believe some of the, you know, more obvious ones like JFK and stuff, but this is not, this channel is not about conspiracy. However, I do want the viewers, you know, to question the status quo, to look into things when necessary, because not everything is as it seems. I mean, come on, when people are in power, we know people are corrupt and things can happen. Ultimately, I just want to be able to present the facts to you, present what's going on, and have you guys decide for yourselves, well, what do I believe? So guys, today we're gonna be talking about the very popular vape brand, Juul. I don't need to explain it to you guys, you guys all know what it is. Actually, just in case anyone doesn't know what it is, here's a picture of it. Okay, cool. But before we get into that, I have one quick favor to ask you. Go ahead and click the like button below, and then if you decide you didn't like it at the end of the video, you can just unclick it. I'll even give you three seconds. Great. Juul was founded by two Stanford grads, Adam Bowen and James Monsies, seeking a healthier way to deliver nicotine. When you look into the history of the company and what's going on today with the vape bans and all that, it's, there's actually kind of some red flags that are, that are raised. So today we're going to be examining that. Just stick with me. In 2018, Altria, a prominent U.S. tobacco company, bought a 35% stake in Juul meaning it owns over a quarter of equity in the Juul company. The campaign for tobacco-free kids called this deal truly alarming. However, it gets worse. Just a few weeks ago, at the end of September, Juul replaced its CEO with an executive at Altria, meaning the CEO of a vaping company was a former big tobacco executive. Juul, an e-cigarette company meant to curb real cigarette smoking, is now being run by an industry leader in the big tobacco cigarette industry. And all while this is going on, there has been a epidemic of teen vaping. Teens are getting addicted to Juuls for, for many reasons. Uh, they're easy to conceal, you can bring them to school, you can do them in the classroom, they're, they're kind of cool looking. Um, and to have a lot of fun, fruity flavors. And laws are now starting to crack down on e-cigarettes and vapes mainly because of Juul, because Juul got so popular so fast and it basically hooked an entire generation on nicotine. On top of all this, Trump proposed a ban to ban fruity flavors, which would drastically hurt Juul's sales because their most popular flavors are mint and mango, both of which would be banned. On top of that, the new CEO said he would not try to fight the ban. He basically rolled over and said, makes sense with me. Imagine this, you're the CEO of a company and the president is trying to take away your most popular product, and you say, okay. And, wait, there's more. They are leaving their Make the Switch slogan. That is no longer their marketing slogan. They're not saying to people, leave cigarettes, come to Juul. Like, that's done. If this wasn't enough, there's one more thing. So Altria, the big tobacco company that owns a portion of Juul, just announced that they are rolling out a new product. Altria is releasing a device called Icos. Icos is similar to a vape, except it doesn't burn liquid vapor. Instead, it heats tobacco without burning it, so it can still release the nicotine, but without the carcinogens. So let me just break this down real quick. So we have vapes. Vapes exist because they're a healthier alternative to real cigarettes. And then we have big tobacco and cigarettes. Cigarettes have been around for a very long time and are highly addictive. Vapes started coming to the market in the early 2000s, but they didn't start getting very popular to the mid to late 2000s. And cigarettes over here, and cigarettes are like, hey, you're stealing my money. Vapes like, no we're not. So what does one of the biggest cigarette companies do? They buy a large portion of the vape company. Are you guys starting to see what I'm seeing? Juul got a brand new generation addicted to nicotine. I mean, I see it all the time. I'm young. I see people who would never have touched a cigarette, but who can't stop hitting their Juul. Then, Big Tobacco buys a large portion of Juul. And as this epidemic goes on, what do we get? We get lobbying, we get laws against vapes starting to be in place. We get an executive of Big Tobacco now as the CEO of a vape company. The largest vape company. Laws are going into effect against the vape and the company doesn't even seem to care. Why? 
because now we have a whole new generation hooked on nicotine. Well, they can't get their mint and their mango vapes. What are they gonna get? Oh, maybe they're gonna get our tobacco. It's just one of those things where you kind of have to wonder. There's a lot of fishy moving parts. And so, we, you know, I don't know the whole truth. I just kind of read the facts and then told the story from an accusational perspective. I see it two ways. I really don't think the two Stanford grads founded Juul with the intent of any of this to happen. I think they're good people and they just wanted to make a healthy cigarette alternative. But from there, I really see two things happening. Either during the funding stage, the growth stage, all that, big tobacco money started to come into play. People were starting to get their backs rubbed and this was kind of more of a planned out long-term thing before Juul even blew up, but they, they funded it well and they backed it well with this they basically groomed Juul to addict a generation nicotine. Or Juul was just a great company from the beginning. They, you know, they did their thing, they exploded in popularity, and young people just happened to love them. They got addicted. Then Big Tobacco sees this as an opportunity to buy into it and turn it around. Here's the thing, Big Tobacco doesn't have the greatest track record. They've been known to cover up the health issues associated with smoking. They've been known to market to kids even when they knew it was giving you cancer. They pushed lies for years and years in the 60s and 70s. So it's not like they're that credible of people we should trust or industries that we should trust. It's kind of like the oil industry. All right guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to click like and then subscribe to join the Zan fam. I want to know your thoughts as well. Did you guys think there's some maniac master plan by Big Tobacco or did it kind of just happen? I want to know.